Holy Spirit. 
Father, we thank you. Jehovah, we give you praise. Holy Spirit, we welcome you now. Speak to us. We subdue every flesh. Take charge now. Cause that we live here better than we came in. Let your will be established tonight in the life of your children. That we will accomplish purpose. That we will fulfill destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We, have, we had a guest in our house yesterday. A member of, of the Living Faith Foundation. In fact, she left and we just started coming to church immediately for yesterday's meeting. And I said something to her hearing. I said, LFF is fasting for seven days. But in Eagles Assembly, we have chosen to fast for 40 days. And I thought that would challenge her. She came with her daughter, who is a teenager. And she said, nobody fasts anymore. Member of Living Faith Foundation. And then I came to church. And I saw the number of eagles that were here. And I was encouraged that we are not aguaguas. We know what we are doing. Then I come in today. And then I realize that something is wrong. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Yashim said something. He said, do not despise the dream of the brethren. I'm not too comfortable, sir, with this idea of having an online option. Let me tell you why. We have done Bible study online before, sir. And like Jesus, only 12 people will come online. And like Jesus also, we had Judas amongst us. By that, I mean the one that you say, Brother Israel, read. He's online, sir. We are seeing him. But when we now say, read Matthew chapter, Brother Israel, Brother Israel, but he's online. And after we share grace, you see somebody will come 30 minutes later, 20 minutes later, and say, Amen. And he was part of the Bible study. 2023 will be different in Jesus' name. Hmm. We're going to pray this evening. But before we pray, let's just look at um, one or two things in the scripture. Give us perspective. A new year has started. It's a new dawn. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse, verse 1. He says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. This is the prophet saying that, look, he needs to position himself well. Be at a vantage point. So that he can watch to see what the Lord will say unto him. The reason why we have gathered, the reason why we are fasting, the reason we choose to embark on an exercise like this, at a time like this, it is to position ourselves well to hear God. 
position ourselves well to see him, to hear him. To know what he has for us for 2023. And verse 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readed it. And so God is also instructing to say, Look, I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to give you visions. And so that the enemy does not take it away from you, that the enemy does not steal it from you. He says, Take note of it, write the vision, make it plain upon tables. And God drew my attention to the fact that he said, make it plain upon tables, not table. Tables. Which means, let it be written in as many places as possible. In fact, one of our pastors was speaking to us and he said, Look, put it in every conspicuous place, everywhere your eye will go to, every hour, every minute. So that throughout the day, you see those things. That the vision and the plan of God for 2023 is constantly visible. It's not far from you. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. It says, though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come and it will not tarry. And so God has given us visions for the year. And God is warning us to be mindful of it, of that vision. God is warning us to make it plain. Part of making it plain is getting understanding of what that vision is. Many people lose it because they don't even understand it. They don't know God's plan. They don't know God's purpose for the year. I was talking to a young man a few days before the new year. And funny enough, what he was asking me was a very strange thing. He said, I'm in a relationship, but it's not making sense. He said, so why are you? I said, okay. So he said he doesn't know what to do. I said, I don't understand. You know it doesn't make sense. I'm not even asking you why it doesn't make sense. You already know that it doesn't make sense. And you don't know what to do. So he said, yes, that is how to go about the breakup that he wants me to teach him. So, so unfortunately, I'm not an expert in that field. Praise God. So the little counsel I could counsel, I did. And then um, two days later, he called and said he had. And that, like I said, it was named uh, Cantankerous. It wasn't dangerous. It wasn't hurtful. It was mild and whatever. So glory be to God. And then the Holy Spirit dropped something in my heart for him, which I will be sharing with the church. It's still a work in progress. But what he dropped in my heart is that you are in a relationship. You yourself, you don't know where you are going to. And then God said he was going to create a helpmate for you. And then you enter into a relationship when you yourself don't even know where you are going to. How can that person help you to get to where you are going to? Or be a support or be a pillar in achieving that goal. And so I said, well, thank God you did this and you have a new start because it's a new year. And so that whatever you are doing this year, please, first and foremost, find your purpose. Find your purpose. Because as long as you are getting it wrong, every other thing you build on that error will not stand. It will not stand. I 
And so some of us are here. Your 